Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Physionic Podcast. Uh, today's going to be a relatively short episode. I only have one topic that I really wanted to discuss, and that topic is selective autophagy. So we're taking autophagy a step further. We're not just talking about or autophagy. I like to use autophagy. We're not just talking autophagy. We're talking selective autophagy. Uh, if you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Nicholas Verhoeven. I am a PhD student in molecular medicine. And actually, funny enough, the laboratory that I work in, the research that I do, is at least partly related to autophagy and mitophagy. And funny enough, the protein I'm going to be discussing is something that I have researched myself in the laboratory. So I have seen it. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, this concept of selective autophagy is essentially a type of autophagy that isn't general in terms of it doesn't uh, just get rid of all proteins that need to be uh, undergo degradation. Uh, it gets rid of particular proteins or particular groupings of proteins and that's what we're going to be talking about. So researchers found and this is, they didn't necessarily find the protein, they didn't find the protein P62, but they used the protein P62 as a marker of something that they were gonna investigate. So what researchers did is they applied a particular amount of heat, heat to C. elegant worms. One of the benefits of C. elegant worms is one, that it is an actual organism so it is uh, not just a single cell, but it is a multitude of cells working together to make an organism. Uh, so that's a benefit. The second benefit is that they are uh, largely see-through. So you can actually see what's going on under a microscope. You can see the different structures of their anatomy. And the third is that we have their entire genome. So we know what all, every single aspect of their genome uh, corresponds to particular proteins and particular functions and things of that nature. So there's a lot of benefits to C. elegans. Now, of course, if that then translates to a mammalian model, uh, like a mouse or a rat or a rabbit or a human being, uh, that is then ne needs to be the next step in terms of research. So anyways, they applied heat to the C. elegant worms, and then they measured P62 levels, and they found that these worms had elevated P62. Great, okay, fantastic. Then what they wanted to do, and what they did, is they genetically engineered these C. elegans to have a greater expression, what's called overexpression of P62. So these new C. elegans were genetically modified to especially express high levels of P62. So their genome was altered so that the rest of their genes were perfectly intact, except for that P62 gene was then led to, le led to greater levels of P62. And interestingly, what they found is that there's an increase in lifespan of 20 to 30% in these C. elegans. So just the overexpression of P62 increased lifespan by 20 to 30 percent. Pretty profound effect. Uh, so really, really interesting there. Now, how does that relate to autophagy? Well, it relates because P62 is a selective autophagy marker, meaning that it is more selective to a to mitochondria, but it also is selective to particular other proteins. Not all of them have been discovered. So you have this high level of this particular protein and you see this effect of increased lifespan, 20 to 30%, so C. elegans usually live about three weeks. These uh, particular worms live to be uh, four weeks to five weeks old. So a uh, pretty substantial increase in their lifespan. Now, P62 is also called the sequestosome. Every time I say that, I want to say it like in an epic, the sequestosome, and <laughs> because it, it sequesters, it takes up proteins from all around the cell, and it anchors onto them, 
And then that's what allows the autophagy machinery, the uh, vesicle formation, the bubble formation, the trash can formation to then go over that particular bundle of proteins that have aggregated together that have been sequestered. And then the autophagy machinery can then degrade that the, all those different proteins. So P62 has a specific affinity for uh, highly ubiquitinated proteins. What is ubiquitination? Ubiquitination is the addition of tags to proteins by what are called E3 ligases. And these E3 ligases uh, will ligate uh, well, it depends on which ones you're talking about, but typically, just to keep this simple, uh, these E3 ligases will then add these ubiquitin tags to proteins that are designed, that are set up or are meant to be degraded. So that's why you see all these proteins that have all these chains, literal chains of ubiquitin proteins on them because they're being tagged for you are going to be degraded. So P62 is specific to just a few of those proteins, not all proteins that have a ubiquitin chain, and that's what allows it to be selective in terms of its autophagy. So they're thinking that now that they have this relationship between P62 and lifespan, now the next step, as I imagine you can, you can figure out for yourself, is to figure out what are those proteins that P62 interacts with and then to start studying those proteins. So when the sequestosome forms, when you have P62 and then you have, let's say, five or six different proteins that have ubiquitin on them, maybe three of them will be anchored onto, the, onto P62 to create the sequestosome, and then we can actually uh, pull that protein out, the, the P62, and just investigate what proteins are attached to it. And then uh, we can see what impact that has for autophagy, and even maybe it's not related to autophagy, although I imagine it is, but uh, maybe it's not related to autophagy, and P62 has some what are called non-canonical pathways by which it can uh, have an effects on the cell that are autophagy independent. So that's a possibility as well. But uh, I imagine that most likely this will be related to this selective autophagy. And one last note, people, people might be uh, thinking, well, how do I increase my P62 levels? Well, anything, well, essentially anything that's going to be increasing your autophagy levels, uh, decreasing amino acids, uh, decreasing caloric content. Those are two ways that you can increase autophagy uh, just because that's what the autophagy machinery does. It recycles and breaks down, degrades uh, particular proteins. However, I will say, not that this would happen with caloric restriction or reducing amino acids, but high levels of P62 are also associated, keyword there, associated with cancer or particular cancers. So it's it's never a it's never a, a clean sweep of okay, we're investigating this protein, we're gonna figure out exactly what it does, we're just gonna increase it and done. We fixed all the problems. There the, the the cells the the cellular network the 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 signaling within the cells is so complex it's not as easy as just increasing one thing and then we're just done uh we'll increase that one thing it might cure or fix a series of different issues if we're lucky and it will probably bring up a series of other problems. And then we're gonna to have to try and figure out how to fix those. And then you have to figure out the context, like how, uh, what situation a person is in. Are, are they dying from, or are they having serious pathology from this particular problem? And if we can eliminate just that one problem, even though there may be some, some consequences in other areas, that may be worth the risk. So. I don't want you to think that P62 is the solution to everything and longevity and all these things, but it is interesting research, no doubt. And again, it just kind of feeds into this idea of selective autophagy, that having these particular proteins sequestered to create, uh, to go undergo autophagy, uh, especially in the lack of the presence of the proteasome. 
Okay, so that's what I've got for you. Hopefully you found it informative. I think this is really interesting research. And of course, I'll have the paper, the, the article linked for you. And with that said, I wish you a wonderful day. Have a good one, guys. See ya.